Ranking systems tallies the player's current progress and relative skills by tracking row numbers of multiple statistics like score and time during a session of gameplay. This results in a competitive game where the goal is usually to reach the top position. For example, Racing Game contains one amazing ranking menu after each race. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. Today, I would like to show you how to make one simple ranking system in Unity, how to sort elements by comparison methods, delegate, interface, and link. Here are the steps I needed to follow. First, I needed to create several players' access information by using scripto object and calculate the highest score among the players. Then, I needed to work on UI canvas and sort the values by list.sort methods. Step 3. I will provide more options to sort the values such as bubble sort, interface, and link. Finally, try to polish this project and more feedbacks such as UI animations and infinite scoring background to this game. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can download the project from my Google Drive or GitHub. So feel free, go ahead and check them out for yourselves. Now, let's get into the video. Create one 2D project. And currently, we have nothing in here. Before we get started, let's create some folders to read easily. Import some resources into this project. I will set this sprite mode to multiple because obvious there are multiple sprites here and not only one. Pixel per unit should be 16 because the image size is 96. Pixel per unit should be 96 divided by 6 is 16. Filter mode we select pointer, no filter, which keep your image sharp. Now we can jump into the sprite editor. This sprite has been laid out in a regular pattern and there are 6 columns and 4 rows. Press the slice button. This will turn every image into its own unique sprite. Just make sure to press apply button and save those changes. If you don't like background color applied to the screen, we can select solid color and choose to the dark color. Create new C sharp script called player data. This class will be used as a container for all of player data that will be displayed in your UI canvas later. Inside this class, try to derive it from scripto object instead of mono behavior. This action tells Unity we will no longer need to put this script onto a game object as a component. Instead, it will treat it like any other common assets that can be created, similar to creating a prefab, things, or material. We have declared player name, player sprite, player score, and the queue number. Adding a scripto object to the assets menu by giving the player data class the following attribute. Menu name is the name of the assets as it appears in the assets menu. File name is the default name when the assets is created. If all went well, you should be able to right click within the project window, go to create, and see your new player data assets on the top of the menu. Click on the first player data assets and take a look at inspector window. You will see an asset to store information Fill in the information for each player. Try to give them all unique name, sprite, score number, and queue number. I used A, B, C, D, E, F to name each player for easy to distinguish. Create a new C-sharp script called Rank Manager. The very first thing we need is a list of players that we want to calculate. So we create a public list of player data and we will call it player datas. I know data is countable. Just tell yourself this variable is one collection instead of single value. Create one private function called calculate higher score and call this function inside star methods. Inside newly function, we have one local variable that is called higher score and its default value is zero. This variable will keep track of higher score inside this function and only works inside this function, which means we cannot get access of this variable outside of the function. We have another local string type variable which saves the higher score's player name. We need to loop through all of the players in our game. 
once the player score is greater than the highest score. In other words, once the player's score is greater than the record, we have to update the highest score. So we can assign the player score to the higher score. Also, assign this player's name to the top name. Finally, we can return the top name and check it out. Save the script and switch back. I'm going to right click the hierarchy and create an empty game object and call it something like Rank Manager. Then, I will drag and drop the Rank Manager script onto its inspector. I will lock this inspector and drag and drop all player data into this empty list. Don't forget to use debugger law to get the value of the higher score's player name in our game. Emily is the top player in this game. Nice. Now we can calculate the first player according to their scores. However, we are not too much concerned with the top player's name. We focus on sort all of the values on UI canvas. Create UI canvas. I will set the UI scale mode to scale with screen size and input 1920 for the X and 1080 for the Y. The reason I do this because now our UI will adapt itself to different screen size. Create a UI panel and change its size. Under this panel, I will create a UI image and drag and drop the blue rectangular in that empty slot. And at this point, we are ready to add the text. Right click on our canvas, go to UI, select text. We call scale it up. Change the font size and use custom font. If you like, you can add the shadow component or outline component to highlight the image for appearance. Now let's create an empty UI panel as the second child of the main panel game object. Change its size because we want six player information panels can be added inside this space. Now let's create first panel and rename it to group 0. Then create one UI image as the player image. Create one UI text as the player name text as well. Once that done, I will rename each game object or pop to read. Do this to keep your project clean will especially help when dragging references into script. In order to save your time, we can click the first group and press the command or control D on keyboard to duplicate twice. Then select the rank content game object. Add vertical layout group which places its child layout elements on the top of each other. The child alignment we select middle center. Resize the group and duplicate five times. Cool. Now let's delete the rest of group first because once we finish the first group settings, we can duplicate to save more times and drag each references to their scripts. Now let's display each player information on the UI canvas. Create a new C-sharp script called group. Before we get started, let's import unityengine.ui so that we can create and modify UI relative variables. Each group will display different player so that we have one public player data variable that is called player data. We are going to add a references to the image component of the player image game object. Also, add another three references to the text component of the player name game object, player score game object, and player queue number game object. Create one public function called update group and call this function inside star function. I used 
public access modifier because this function will be called from another script. We can quickly assign player information to their UI parts by using player data dot player sprite to get access of the sprite from scriptal object, then assign it to the image component its sprite property. Likewise, assign player data name to the name text component. We use two string methods to convert integer type variables into string type. Go back to Unity and add the group script to the group game object. Don't forget to drag and drop the correct player data, image UI, and text UI inside the respective slots in the group script. Press play. Now, Alice information has been displayed on UI canvas. We can duplicate five times and save your work. Just remember, drag different player data inside their respective slot. Cool. Now, each player information has been listed on the UI canvas. Then, we can fast create two buttons for sorted values according to their scores or queue number. It's time to sort the value. I create an array of group type called groups. I will add in all groups to this array. Let's first jump to a new thing for elaborate what I say. Create one new C sharp script called test compare. Declare a public list of the integer and we will call it numbers. And then initialize the list inside star methods. There are 10 numbers inside the list from 10 to 100. Using list.sort methods allows us to sort the elements in the entire list using the default compare. Once we press the spacebar, let's look at the list on the inspector. Save the script and switch bank. Create an empty game object. Drag and drop the test compare script onto it. Press play. At the beginning of the game, there are 10 numbers listed on inspector. Once we press the spacebar, we can sort values automatically. Great. However, these methods can only compare integer numbers or float numbers. In all cases, we want to compare each player data's score. Methods overloading is the process which we can give a single method's multiply definitions. So we can mouse hover the sort methods and there are more options for us. The second one sorts the elements by generic interfaces I compare. The third option sorts the elements in the entire list using the specified generic type comparison. Let's try to use the third option. Since the parameter of the methods is the comparison type, actually, there is one delicate with two parameters. Therefore, using these methods, we only need to declare one delegate with two player data parameters. Let's first use integer type parameters to test. The return type should be the integer type and return a dot compare to b. I use int dot compare to methods which compares this instance to another integer number and returns an indication of their relative values. This method only returns three values, minus one, one, and zero. If the return value is 1, which means a is greater than b. If the return value is minus 1, which means a is less than b. We can put debug.law to get the return value in our game. The result is minus 1, 1, and 1. As I mentioned before, I use the third option. The parameter of this method is the comparison type, which means this is one delegate. Delegate is just a reference value that is assigned it a method, and when I call this value, I can call it just like a method. Now we can pass in this comparison function inside sort methods and check it out. Once we press the spacebar, all of the numbers on the list 
will sort automatically. Actually, we can replace this function decoration with the lambda expressions for easy to read. We use the lambda decoration operator to separate the lambda's parameter list from its body. We specify input parameters on the left side of the lambda operator and an expression or a statement block on the other side. After understanding the comparisons and delegate, we can use these methods to sort a list of game objects by their hash score or Q number. All right, let's jump back to our previous process. Create one private comparison function called sort by score. There are two player data type parameters. Then return player a dot player score dot compare to player b dot player score. If we press the spacebar, we will call the list dot sort methods. The parameter is the comparison function name. Press play. Once we press the spacebar, list has been sorted correctly on Inspector. Additional, we have to visualize all of the changes on UI canvas. So we create one new function called update rank. For loop all of the player data in this game. First of all, assign new player data list to the respective group player data. Then we will call update group functions from group script. Drag off the groups into group array. When we are in play mode, once we press the spacebar, all of the values will be ascending order. We can use the send steps to sort by Q number. Add button component on these two UI buttons and drag the correct functions on click sections as well. Nice! We almost finished this project. Since most of ranking systems follow descending order, which means they are ranges from the largest numbers to the smallest numbers. However, our current system is ascending order. There are many methods and solutions to fix these problems. In these cases, I just reverse the group order inside array to save your time. Now let's introduce another several methods which can sort values as well. Bubble sort is simple sorting algorithms that works by repeatedly swapping the adjacent elements if they are in wrong order. The path through the list is repeated until the list is sorted. We need to for loop all of player data in this game. Compares each pair of adjacent elements and swap them if they are in wrong order. In other words, once the front player's higher score is greater than the next ones. We must swap these two elements immediately. Create one local player data type variables to save front player data temporarily. Then swap these two elements in the list. Finally, assign the temporary variables to the next player data. Pay attention on here, since we are going to access the next player in the list, we have to make sure the index i is not out of list range, which means inside for loop, it should be smaller than player data dot count minus one. It's not a completed bubble sort, but let's test this function first. Once we press the spacebar, we will call the bubble sort methods and update the UI slots. 
Once we press the spacebar, the list has been sorted in one step. However, several numbers are still in wrong order. We can press again. Each press will sort into a new list. The list is already sorted, but our algorithm does not know if it is completed. So how many passes will be required in this loop? We can use while loop to check whether this for loop is completed or not. The algorithm does one whole pass without any swap to know it is sorted. We create one local Boolean variable called its bubble. The default value is true. Once its bubble is equal to be true, we will run this part. Once there is no swap, which means its bubble is equal to be false, we will stop the while loop as well. In other words, once there is any swap inside if statements, its bubble is equal to be true. If its bubble is equal to be false, we will stop run this loop. Let's try again. Now this time, once we press the spacebar, all of numbers has been sorted correctly in one time. Cool. We can complete the sort by Q number button by copying and pasting this function. Then change the player's property. However, these two functions look similar and we can use delegate to achieve. Delegate basically holds a references to a method or several messages. As I mentioned before, delegate is just a references variable that is assigned to a method. And when I call this variable, I can call it just like a method. The only differences between these two methods is the player property. One is player higher score, another is player's Q number. So we create two private functions called get player score, get player Q number. The return type should be integer type. An inside function return player data dot player higher score and return player data dot player Q number. We declare the delegate template. This template will match exactly what type of methods we can assign to our delegate. We create a delegate with the delegate keyword. Delegate signature should be exactly the same as the above two functions includes the return type and parameter type. So we can use the delegate type to get each player data properties on here. Now we can remove the previous methods and replace with the new functions. We can press different buttons to check them out. Nice. Also, we can achieve the ascending order by using link. To use link in a C-sharp script, 
we need to add a using statement for the namespace like this using system.link. The most common uses for link statements tend to be sorting, searching, and filtering. We call sorting operator order by, which sort the elements in the collection based on specified fields in ascending order. T is just a common standard in lambda expression. The take methods can be used to take a subset of a collection put into another collection. This is why the return type is the list of player data. Often when we see a link statement acting on a collection, you will see it end with two lists. The reason is called differ execution. When you use a link statement, the execution of the statement does not happen until it's needed. Link is amazing powerful and with just a little time learning the syntax, it can be a huge time save. If you build in mobile or anything with garbage collection, using link can be an issue. Watch out for it. In iOS systems, using link will report errors so that we have to use list.sort methods or other solutions. However, don't let discourage you from taking advantages of amazing language future. One tendency I would like to do maybe with UI animation, I watch Matt's videos before and show you a new way to make UI animations. Download LinkedIn from Asset Store. Inside group script, I'm going to create two public functions which we'll call on event trigger component. To animate something on LinkedIn, we simply call this class and then type something you want to perform. There are plenty of available methods you can explore. I have attached this script to each UI slot, which I want to scale when mouse enter or mouse exist. LinkedIn can save your work by using method chaining instead of using animator, which can increase your performances. Likewise, follow the same step, we are able to add another types of animations to the UI buttons as well. Okay, so that's something that I have planned for this tutorial. Before I finish though, I would like to show you how to polish the game because it hasn't been made it very intuitive. We can drag one background sprite to the hierarchy, reset the transform component and the skill of the background to match the screen size. Then duplicate this background sprite, press and hold the V key to active the vertex snapping mode, hold down the left mouse button once our cursor over the vertex you want, and drag the sprite next to any other vertex. Create an empty game object and reset the transform component as the parent of these two background sprites. We want our background sprites move horizontally from right to left. For this to work, we need to write down the right side background sprite position x value. Create one C sharp script called rolling background and open it up. Inside update function, move the transform in the left direction in each frame. The serialized field private variable move speed determines how fast our background can score. Once our empty game object position x value is less than the half width of the entire sprite. The transform position x value will return to zero. You will notice that it seems like your background image is infinite scoring during gameplay. Additional, the most direct way to reverse the scoring direction is to set the move speed to a negative number. All right, this is end of this video. So that's honestly just tip of iceberg star for how to sorting. If you want to learn more about common sorting algorithms, methods overloading interfaces implemented by unity leave the comments and let me know my to-do list is waiting for you guys in the next video we will take a look at how to recreate monster traitor by unity and review the inheritance and toggle with different ui menus if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribers turn on the post notifications so you will get a notice every time i upload a new video Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video.